Now, the model that we obtained uh, is a model with a linear, nonlinear uh, diffusion. Uh, the equation that we obtained for our QED model is a particular case of a general nonlinear stochastic uh, differential equation, or SD for short, known as the Langevin equation. The Langevin equation is probably one of the most famous SDs in science. So, in this video, I wanted to talk a bit about the Langevin equation. First, uh, let's start with a bit of history. The story of modern finance uh, starts with a PhD thesis of uh, Louis Bachelier in uh, 1900. Bachelier was developing his own model uh, of Brownian motion uh, as a free diffusion a uh, few, few years ahead of Einstein. He then applied it to model stock prices and came up with uh, what is today known as the arithmetic Brownian motion or ABM model. His work has stayed completely unnoticed uh, to the mathematical community until it was uh, discovered or rediscovered by Andrei Kolmogorov, a Russian mathematician. Kolmogorov appreciated Bachelier's work and uh, told about it uh, to Paul Levy. Then Leonard uh, Savage translated Bachelier's work to English, and this is how Paul Samuelson learned about uh, this work. The contribution of Paul Samuelson from 1965 was uh, the invention of the geometric Brownian motion, or GBM model, as a way to improve a problem with the ABM model. The problem was that in the ABM model, a stock price can go negative. And in contrast, in a GBM model, a stock price not only cannot go negative, it can't even become zero. In other words, the boundary x equals zero is inaccessible in a GBM model. We will talk more about it later, uh, but for now I want to continue a bit uh, with this short historical note. So, about uh, five years after Bachelier's uh, work, Einstein published his work on the theory of the Brownian motion, and this work sparked lots of new research among physicists. The French physicist Paul Langevin studied a simplified model of Brownian motion for particles in an external field uh, that uh, produce uh, force action on the Brownian particles. For example, this can be a potential of intermolecular forces in a liquid. And in 1908, he published a paper on this topic where he suggested what later became known as the Langevin equation. This work was extended later in 1920s by Fokker and Planck, who studied related phenomena in physics. The Langevin equation for a Brownian particle in an external potential is shown here in equation 6. In this equation, x stands for a particle position, dot x stands for its time derivative, and uh, x with two dots means the second derivative in time. Parameter gamma describes diffusion in the system, and u of x is an external force potential, for example, a potential formed by some other fast particles in the liquid. And finally, dot V is a dot in our right hand side stand for a Gaussian white noise. One example of a system that gives rise to the Langevin equation is when heavy particles with mass capital M are subject to a force potential of light particles of mass small m. The light particles are at equilibrium at temperature T and have a Maxwell distribution of their velocities V, given by equation 8 here. And it turns out that analysis of such system yields directly the Langevin equation. You can find more details about it in the book by uh, Zev Schuss cited on this slide. On this graph, you can see an example of a potential Ux that can arise in the Langevin equation. This potential has two metastable states, and we will talk quite a bit uh, about some poten such potential in this uh, lecture and the next one. Now, the Langevin equation can also be written in an equivalent uh, phase space form. To this end, we write it as two equations. The first equation says that V is a time derivative of X, and the second equation gives the time evolution of V. And this means that the solution of the Langevin equation is actually a pair of two variables, the particle position xt and its velocity vt. And in many cases, it's useful to consider a limit of the Langevin equation that is obtained if we take the dissipation coefficient gamma to be very large. 
This limit is called overdamped Brownian motion, or the Smolukovsky limit. And it turns out that in this limit, the original Langevin equation becomes the overdamped Langevin equation, shown here in equation 11. This is the way, uh, there is a way to actually derive this result. It uses the phase space from a form that I showed you above, uh, plus rescaling of time by the factor of gamma. You can find the derivation in the book of, sh of shoes that I already mentioned. Now, this equation is only of first order in time derivative, unlike the original Langevin equation that was of the second order in time. In fact, the overdumped version of the Langevin equation is probably used more often uh, than uh, its full version, at least outside of physics. For example, remember our discussion of stochastic gradient descent method for training machine learning algorithms. In fact, minimization of the lost function um, there can exactly be described as a Langevin equation. Just think of x as a model parameter and of u of x as a loss function that you want to minimize. The role of Brownian noise in the Langevin equation will be played by the observational noise in a mini-batch uh, procedure of the stochastic gradient descent method. Now, uh, if we take the Spolukovsky limit for a free Brownian particle without any potential, uh, we obtain equation 12 on this slide from the Langevin equation. We can rewrite it as shown in equation 13, where the constant d is Einstein's diffusion coefficient. And you can easily recognize in equation 13 the ABM model without a drift. We can also compare the Langevin equation uh, with the eta diffusion with drift. The Langevin equation uh, is uh, shown here in equation 14, and I wrote the noise term xi as a, a general noise term that can be either white noise or not white noise, uh, but for now we can assume that we deal only with the white noise. On the other hand, we can write a data diffusion law for the GBM model, and it's shown here in equation 15. So, if we compare these two equations, we can conclude that the GBM model corresponds to a potential U of X, shown here in equation 16. And it's very interesting that this is a potential of an inverted harmonic oscillator. I say inverted because of the negative sign uh, in this expression. This means a negative mass of a particle. And uh, on this graph, you can see this potential. If you put a particle exactly at point x equals zero, this will be a point of instability. A particle will roll down. And what it means, we will see in the next videos.